Although the left and right sides of the human cortex look almost identical, the hemispheres have specialized functions. You might have heard that the left brain is analytical and logical, while the right is more intuitive and creative. The idea that people are either left-brained or right-brained is very popular, but it turns out, thankfully, that we use our whole brain. We just recruit the left and right hemispheres for different tasks, a phenomenon known as cortical lateralization. Let's explore this in more detail. This woman is facing us, so her left is on our right and vice versa. The primary motor cortex, which controls voluntary movement, is located roughly here. We know from work of German physiologist Edward Hitzig in the 1860s that this part of the brain has a contralateral connection to the body parts it controls, which means that it is connected to the opposite side. Hitzig first noticed this while caring for wounded soldiers. He found that touching the surface of a specific strip of cortex caused movement on the opposite side of the body. The various primary sensory areas also have this contralateral organization, such that incoming sensory information from the body is sent to the cortex on the opposite side. The primary somatosensory cortex is located just behind the motor strip, which is responsible for the perception of touch sensations. It receives its information from sensory neurons whose axons cross over, so that the right side of the body talks to the left somatosensory strip and the left side of the body talks to the right. The connections of these primary sensory and motor areas of the cortex are also symmetrical in that the left and right sides of the body have equal representation in their respective hemispheres. Let's consider the organization of information from the visual system to the cortex. Unlike the somatosensory system, which sends signals separately from each side of the body, the visual system is a little different because the left and right eyes capture images from both the left and right sides of visual space, as shown in this figure. For example, the outside part of the right eye and the inside part of the left eye detect stimuli in the left visual field, shown in red. The pathway from the inside part of the left eye crosses over at the optic chiasm, and the signals then get sent to the right hemisphere. The pathway from the outside part of the right eye stays on the same side, so ultimately the signals from the left visual world all end up in the right hemisphere. If you follow the green lines, you can see that this is the same arrangement for the right visual field as well. In other words, information from left and right visual space is sent to the primary visual cortex on the opposite side, in a way that conserves the symmetry of the visual scene. Unlike the primary sensory and motor areas, the association cortex is asymmetrical because its functions differ between the left and right hemispheres. The left hemisphere appears to have a stronger role in processing language and logical-based thought, while the right is involved in more holistic, spatial-type tasks. Most people, about 95% of right-handers and 85% of left-handers, show this bias, although a small proportion of people have the opposite arrangement. Regardless of whether the lateralization is typical or reversed, Ordinarily, our hemispheres communicate with each other via a large bundle of axons called the corpus callosum, located here in the middle of the brain. This highway allows for the exchange of information between the hemispheres. But how do we know about association cortex asymmetry or the role of the corpus callosum? The asymmetrical distribution of function in the association cortex is called cortical lateralization. A lot of what we know about lateralization comes from observations of people with split brain syndrome who have had the corpus callosum cut. Believe it or not, this is a condition caused by surgeons, in extreme cases, as a last resort treatment for epilepsy. Epilepsy is characterized by excessive electrical activity in the brain, which can spread across large areas. Severing the corpus callosum can prevent the spread of troublesome electrical activity and confine the seizure to one area. One consequence of split brain surgery is that stimuli from the various sensory systems can be sent separately to each hemisphere. Recall how sensory information is conserved in a contralateral and symmetrical way. So in the visual system, the bits of the eye that capture left visual space are sent to the primary visual cortex in the right hemisphere, and vice versa. Because the corpus callosum is cut in split brain patients, the hemispheres can't transfer information to each other. So what happens to people who have this procedure? As it turns out, people generally function just fine under everyday conditions. You could notice a difference in information processing under controlled laboratory conditions where the split brain patient keeps their head stationary 
and the researcher presents visual and tactile stimuli separately to each hemisphere. What research has shown is that people with split brain syndrome can easily verbally identify something presented in their right visual field, since this information travels to the language-intensive left hemisphere. However, when something appears in the left visual field, which travels to the spatial, nonverbal right hemisphere, they cannot name it. If instead they are given a spatial identification task that is confined to the right hemisphere, such as identifying an object with their left hand by touch, they can easily retrieve it, even though they can't name what they just saw. This demonstrates that the left and right hemispheres, if they can't talk to each other, are very limited in what they can do. Another source of information about cortical lateralization and asymmetry comes from studies of people who have sustained injury to particular regions of the association cortex. We can't cover all of the brain damage studies, there are simply too many. But we can look at some areas in particular in the left and right hemispheres whose damage results in specific types of impairments. Two examples we'll consider are aphasias, which are impairments in language comprehension or production, usually as a result of damage to the left association cortex. And agnosias, which are perceptual impairments resulting in difficulty in recognizing objects or people from their sensory features, and are usually a result of damage to the right association cortex. Broca's aphasia, first described by the French physician Paul Broca, is characterized by difficulty producing speech, although speech comprehension is mostly unaffected. Broca examined these patients' brains after they died and discovered damage to an area in the left frontal lobe located near the primary motor cortex, which became known as Broca's area. Wernicke's aphasia, first described by German physician Karl Wernicke, is characterized by few problems producing the movements to speak, but speech doesn't make sense and patients have difficulty understanding others. Upon examination of their brains, they were found to have damage to an area in the left temporal lobe, quite near the primary auditory cortex, involved in hearing. This area became known as Wernicke's area. Whereas aphasias are usually associated with damage to different parts of the left association cortex, often through injury or stroke, agnosias are most commonly found in people with damage to parts of the right association cortex. Agnosias are very specific perceptual issues, unrelated to any problem with the eyes or vision in general, but rather in dealing with processing incoming visual information and making spatial sense out of it. Contralateral neglect is an unusual condition where people ignore the left side of their world. Dressing only the right side of the body or eating from only the right side of one's plate are common symptoms. Keep in mind that the right association cortex is specialized in spatial tasks, and this disorder is linked to damage in the right parietal cortex. Prosopagnosia is an even more unusual condition, also known as face blindness. People with prosopagnosia have difficulty identifying specific faces, even though they have no trouble seeing faces. Face recognition is a very specialized spatial task. Think about it. It's difficult to describe someone using our words. Everyone has two eyes, a nose, and a couple of lips. It's the differences in size, shape, and position of these features that allows us to tell the difference between our best friend and a stranger who has the same coloring and general features. This disorder is associated with damage to an area of association cortex that spans the occipital and temporal lobes called the fusiform area and is tucked in behind the cortex here. So association areas in the left and right cortices often show a bias toward particular types of functions. Before the development of brain imaging technologies, discoveries about cortical lateralization were made possible by careful observations of people with brain damage.